came to Iowa back in August of 2013 for a job out in Manchester, and not long after I got that job and started working at it, um, I found myself in trouble. Started drinking, and um, the drinking took over, and before I knew it, not only did I lose my job, I had nowhere to go, I was 700 miles away from where I grew up at, I was on the streets, and I ran into a gentleman in Manchester who happened to be a priest at one of the churches, and he offered to bring me down to Dubuque, said there was a rescue mission that would bring me in and help me get back on my feet again. Well, basically how I got here was a multitude of different things, um, divorce, loss of job, um, depression. I got out of prison. And they uh, sent me here. Um, I was robbed. I was staying at the camp field, and I had um, some money uh, removed from my wallet out of my room. I was with this lady for 17 years. Loved her dearly, still do love her dearly. We have our good times and our bad times, our ups and downs. No children out of the relationship, but we still had fun. Anyway, after 17 years and numerous things that came between us, she decided enough was enough and you've got to go. I'm not the usual homeless person. I am not a drug addict. I'm not an alcoholic. Basically, I'm here because I lost my um, home, my license, and my... Um, job all on the same day. My name is Rick Mim and I'm the executive director of the Dubuque Rest Commission. Welcome and uh, here's a little bit of the reasoning and thoughts behind uh, what we're doing as a project here at the mission with uh, some of the men who live here. One of my favorite um, pieces on NPR, National Public Radio, is StoryCorps. And it uh, documents uh, between family members, friends, uh, sometimes not even acquaintances that just happen to meet under circumstances, uh, their stories in a very brief three-minute format. And I was thinking of that and how much I enjoy listening to people's stories and do so much story listening here at the Rescue Mission that perhaps we could record in a similar way the men who live here and their stories. I was pissed off that I lost my apartment and over a girl. And so when they came to arrest me, I just spit in his face. I never do that again because I don't want to go back to prison. I was driving for a friend of mine in Illinois and I'm been, I was driving a dump truck for him over there in um, the suburbs of Chicago. Unbeknownst to me, after I had an accident over there, he didn't have insurance on the dump truck, so they took my license for 10 years. For the last 10 years, I've been basically walking the highways of North America, for, literally from coast to coast. I started one time in California and wound up in Connecticut. After I lost my business, I basically seemed like I lost all my friends. So I was basically by myself. I had no one to talk to. Um, it was, I just didn't know if I could even go on the next day. I was living month to month at the camp field, and I was short of my monthly rent, so I moved in here. I am not really originally from around here. All my family lives in other states, miles away from here. I had no family, no plans, no nothing around here, no job at the point in time. I had no place to go. So after making a few contacts, they said the Dubuque Rescue Mission. Well, I didn't really want to go to no homeless place. I'm not really a, that type of person, I don't think, at this point in time. I really didn't believe I was actually homeless, homeless. When I think of the New Testament, especially the Gospels, which are the story of Jesus, um, I see there Christ constantly um, meeting those men, women, children. 
on the margins and simply listening to their story. Why are you here? What do you need? How can I help? All I want right now is to get back into society. I just want to um, get a job and get my own place and help my um, help the people around here. This is basically now my new family. And no, I'm not going to be here forever. I don't want to be here forever. I wouldn't wish this for anybody, but these people have been, become my new family. I was very suicidal. Um, I thought I had nothing to live for. Um, but these people here have helped me to help me realize that there is things out there for me that I can overcome the situation that I'm in. I go see my mom, my uncle. I couldn't do that locked up. So that's the reason why I'm so glad that I'm not there anymore because it's not a fun place to be in. Looking at it from a point of view of being a homeless person with nowhere to go, it is just that. I have nowhere to go and I depend on this place to help me to get back on my feet again. What I really want to do is what I'm actually doing right now is I'm working down in the bike shop for the mission, helping fix bikes, which I am truly enjoying. Um, if I could get something like that, I would like to do that. I often thought that, you know, people in life should have to experience being homeless at least one time in their life so they, they could see what it's like to live on the other side of the fence because it's not an easy experience. They um, basically, they um, ignore you if you're homeless. I've been, I, I, like I said, I walked the highways of North America. I've walked for days and not had anybody even stop and ask if I was needed help. I really would like to see myself back on my feet having some sense of responsibility that people would respect me and I just want to be able to see my grandchildren. So if there was a prayer I could utter it would be from Meister Eckhart, a mystic from uh, about 500 years ago who said if the only prayer I could utter was a thank you that would be enough. So that is my prayer. Thank you. Lord, I come to you today and um I would like to ask your blessings upon this prayer, Lord, and just watch over me and guide me. And just, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. It's not exactly your, your, all your wishes in that prayer, you know what I mean? You might have different, different plans or different ideas but it's not exactly what you're supposed to be doing. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thou kingdom come. I like that prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And what does that mean to you? Forgive everybody that um, puts down the homeless, basically.